What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today I have your first recap player grades and position grades video of the regular season and we're going to be talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Kansas City Chiefs and I'm going to eat some crow because I really thought the Jags were going to do better on the defensive side of the ball. If you would have told me prior to this game that the Jaguar offense was going to be why we were even remotely in this game, I would say that you are freaking nuts. That's what I would say to you. I would say you are freaking nuts because there's no way this offense is the reason that we are staying in this game. But what do you know it was? And if you would have told me that Gardner Minshew would lead the Jaguars in passing yards in this game, week one of the NFL season, I would have told you I called that shit while I was doing fucking mock drafts for the Jaguars. So you're welcome for that. Just kidding. Of course, no one actually called that. No one thought that that was actually going to happen. But it was insane, and I'm very excited to talk about not only Gardner Minshew, Choose performance, but Nick Foles' performance as well, along with these wide receivers and this offense, and I'm ready to tear into this defense as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is the Jaguars. Week number one, matchup versus the Kansas City Chiefs, position grades, player grades, and players of the week. Alrighty, so as always, we're going to kick things off with the offensive side of the ball, starting things off with the quarterback position. And could you believe it? If week one you told me that I was going to be sitting here giving the quarterbacks an A grade, I would say you're freaking crazy because I never would have thought that, you know, Nick Foles would be deserving necessarily of an A grade. I think maybe like a B plus or a B minus at most, but Gardner Minshew went in there and definitely, definitely deserved an A grade. Gardner Minshew, man, that was, I was so excited when that happened because, of course, you know, I'm a big Washington State fan. You know that I liked Gardner Minshew last year when he was playing for WSU. I seen him play live three, four, five times, something like that. And I was very excited when the Jaguars drafted him in the sixth round, but I never thought that he would go out there and have this type of a game. And as of now, it looks like that Gardner Minshew is going to be our starting quarterback going forward. The Jaguars just traded for uh, Josh Dobbs, a fifth round draft pick, if you haven't heard that already, to be the backup quarterback. So Gardner Minshew is going to be the guy. And Gardner went 22 for 25, one touchdown for 225 yards and when Nick Foles was in there it's not like Foles was a slouch either Foles went in there and he did his thing too he went five for eight 75 yards and a touchdown his touchdown pass they threw was an absolute beauty DJ Chark caught two beauties we'll talk more about DJ Chark once we get into the wide receivers but Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew both delivered beautiful beautiful deep throws to DJ Chark, but Nick Foles definitely had a solid game when he was in there, and it's a damn shame that he's out there and he broke his clavicle, and now he's going to be out for approximately like 8 to 10 weeks, and that is wild to lose your starting quarterback that you just paid $88 million to, and you lose him the first snap, well not the first snap, but the first touchdown of the regular season, like that is insane, that sucks. But Gardner Minshew looks kind of promising, you know, uh, a lot of people talked about Gardner, you know, during the preseason and said that he was a bust or he's a bad quarterback, you know, and then there was those people that said, let's put him in an offense that Nick Foles has, you know, let's see what he can do with the starters, like, you know, with the D.D. Westbrooks, with the D.J. Charks, with the Chris Conleys, you know, let's see how Gardner Minshew can do with those guys, and you know what, he did really, really good, I think he threw, he threw 13 straight completions or something like that, and he did throw an interception, but that was when they took it off the air. Literally, they took it off the local air in Jacksonville, too. So I couldn't even find it on, like, a Reddit stream. So, you know, that game was just off of TV. So no one saw Gardner Minshew's interception. So it's almost like it didn't happen. So Gardner Minshew, he played well. He definitely deserved, you know, from his performance, deserves to give the quarterbacks an overall A rating. Fight me in the comment section if you want to. But these quarterbacks played really, really well. Nick Foles, too, when he was in there, he had a good game. He put it together. 22 for 25 for 225 and 88 completion percentage. That is never not going to get you an A unless... I, I'm not good at math. I don't know what the lowest 80% would be, but 22 for 25 for 225, that definitely helps the quarterbacks get an A on the day. Now we're going to be talking about the running backs. The Jags looked like they wanted to throw the ball a little bit more this season, or it might have just been because they were down for most of the game, but they threw the ball a lot. Leonard Fournette ended up, I believe, getting... I think six carries for 
51 yards. It was probably more carries than that, but I know it, he ended up with 50 to 60 yards uh, total. He had like five yards per carry. Uh, early on, it was hard for him. You know, he, it was hard for him to get started a little bit, but towards the end of the game, he was kind of picking up steam, you know, getting those big runs, getting those chunks, six, seven yard runs. And we did not see a lot of Raquel Armstead. We only seen him take, I believe, one carry. And I think he did, he did good with it too. I think he got five, six yards on that carry. So Leonard Fournette, again, you know, we weren't, we're not really surprised by this but you know he's the every down back he was out there he's doing his thing he kind of contributed in the past game nothing too crazy you know a couple of screen passes here and there but as far as the running backs as a whole I'm gonna be giving him a B I think Leonard did solid you know for what it was like I said the Jaguars were mostly playing from behind like this whole entire game so like the fact that Leonard Fournette didn't get a lot of carries isn't his fault you know the Jags had to kind of be in a situation where they had to pass the ball and you know Gardner Minshew did the most of what he could you know this defense just couldn't hold up which again is just so freaking shocking to me but Leonard Fournette I think pieced together a pretty solid game so I'm gonna give him a solid B uh, as a running back I would like to see Raquel Armstead get a little bit more reps more than just one at least you know maybe five six carries a game you know give Leonard Fournette that bre that blow you know make sure that he is you know ready to go and healthy and he can run the ball as much as he's doing and you know we can get Raquel Armstead in there and give Leonard Fournette a much needed break. Now we're going to be talking about the wide receivers and I'm very very excited to be talking about the wide receivers because I am so excited to see how DJ Chark progresses because as of right now it looks like DJ Chark is going to be a stud. He had over 140 yards receiving, he did have that touchdown reception from Nick Foles and he caught the ball like he... He had a quarterback that could throw him the ball, actually, that he could get under, he could get his hands on, and he can catch. Like, isn't that just a wild concept, Jaguars? Isn't that just a wild concept? Blake Bortles could have never done that. Nick Foles, Gardner Minshew, two quarterbacks that weren't here a year before, already gave the ball to DJ Chark like that, and he's already out here making plays. You know, he was one of the highest scoring fantasy wide receivers this week. Behind, you know, of course, Sammy Watkins, obviously, who was chilling on my fantasy bench personally, uh, who had 198 yards. But 140 yards for any receiver is very, very impressive. So I was very impressed with DJ Chark's performance. I was also very impressed with Chris Conley's performance, too. He almost got over 100 yards. This is a guy that a lot of us were kind of talking about and saying, you know, maybe this guy can be something. Maybe Chris Conley can be the number one wide receiver maybe he could go out there and make some big plays and you know what he did I don't think he dropped a pass that he was thrown I think he caught every ball that was you know thrown his way and Chris Conley did well and he did very very impressive and you know it looks like the three between Chark Conley and DD who DD you know he didn't have a lot of receiving yards but mostly caught everything that was thrown in his direction Marquise Lee didn't get any attention I don't even think he got thrown to or looked at once you know it was weird not seeing Marquise Lee get involved but it's cool to see DJ Chark and Chris Conley eat and you know D.D. Westbrook being all reliable that he is so these wide receivers are going to be getting an A from me I think they went out and they did their thing and they did a really really good job now I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this position group because they didn't really you know really make an impact that's the tight ends I'm going to be giving the tight ends a C I think Jeff Swaim had like two catches so you know like I mean I there's not much to go off of so like I said I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it a C for the tight ends and finally, for the offensive line, what are we going to be giving the offensive line? We're going to be giving him a B plus. You know, Will Richardson making his first start at left tackle, Jawan Taylor making his first start at right tackle, and I don't think they got sacked once. If, if they got sacked, they might have only got sacked once. And of course, you know, Nick Foles got hit really hard, but you know, there wasn't anything that was just really appalling and like disgusting where. You know, there's a free rusher coming right at Gardner or a free rusher coming right at Nick Foles. You know what I mean? Like, this offensive line held up and did their job for the most part. And it was really, really good to watch. It was really fun. And that was, like, a big thing that I said in the preview that I'm going to be watching this offensive line. I'm going to be seeing what they can do. And, you know, it looks like they held up. And I'm going to be giving them a solid B-plus for that. They definitely did their job. They held up. They did what they needed to do as an offensive line unit. And I think a B-plus is fair for this offensive line. And finally, we are going to be giving the offense a final grade. I'm going to be giving them um, a B-plus overall. The wide receivers and the quarterbacks played well. It looks like this passing game for Jacksonville might be a little bit better than once, ha than once everybody had thought. Uh, Leonard Fournette did well, too. Five yards per carry. You know, you'll never argue that with a running back like Leonard Fournette. 
Um, so overall, this offense played well, you know, well enough to win. This defense just did not hold up, which is something that, again, I am just so surprised by saying. But the offense, again, gets a B plus. Now let's dive in to the defense. Now we're going to dive into the defensive side of the ball, and I don't have a lot of good things to say about a lot of position groups. For the DBs, for example, I'm going to be giving them a D. AJ Boye, man, what the hell, dude? Like, AJ Boye is supposed to be this top five corner, one of the best in the league, can cover anybody, could be dominant, and he was getting worked by Sammy Watkins. He's getting worked by Travis Kelsey. Like, I understand that these are good football players, but AJ Boye, if you are a good football player also, you should be able to go out there and put up a fight and not be giving up, like, these 40, 30-yard pass plays. Like, AJ Boye was one of the most disappointing players in this game to watch, and I was very, very upset by that. Ronnie Harrison, too. Ronnie Harrison, you know, he had that personal foul penalty. I think two holding penalties back-to-back. Like, just the undisciplined. We were, we are the most undisciplined team in the NFL and Ronnie Harrison showed why you know he did not have a good game Jared Wilson as well struggled you know the safeties that's what everybody was talking about during the offseason the Jaguars don't have any safeties and you know they showed that because Sammy Watkins burned us across the middle a lot you know for 198 yards like there wasn't just like a catch that Sammy had for like eight yards so no they all went for like 20 plus so they were just eating up the zone and we we're playing zone against a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes like I understand this is a guy making his second start but this is a guy that did win the league MVP you need to put some respect on his name and he ate and he dominated against us and none of these wide receiver none of these DBs could run with any of these receivers you know even Jalen struggled a little bit I'm gonna say Jalen definitely did the best out of all these people in the secondary but He definitely did not have his best game ever. And, you know, Tyreek Hill ended up going out with injuries, so we kind of lost out on the rest of that matchup. But the DBs as a whole, I'm going to be giving him a D. The linebackers, D, Miles Jack, what the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be a leader on this team. You're supposed to be, like, this athletic freak linebacker that can just go toe-to-toe with any tight end, can go toe-to-toe with any slot wide receiver. Like, that is who you're supposed to be. That is your play style. That is, you know, why we paid you the big bucks. That's why we made you the third highest paid linebacker in the league. We didn't make you the third highest paid linebacker in the league to go out there and get freaking suspended on your first couple of reps. Like, that is not what we paid you to do. Like, that is, I mean, not suspended, but ejected. You know what I mean? Like, that is just embarrassing stuff and you know you've seen guys like Juan Alexander out there and that is that his name I don't think that's his name but it was uh something Alexander DJ Alexander or something like that see I don't even I don't even know the guy he was out there you know Telvin Smith wasn't out there Quincy Williams got hurt like these linebackers were dropping like flies whether that be from ejection or from injury and it was very hard to watch so again the defensive line is going to be getting a D so that's two D's in a row the defensive line I'm going to be giving a C I think they did all right against the run defense you know Shady McCoy definitely did have a couple of good runs and you know they didn't get a sack obviously but you know Yannick Ngakwe, Clayus Campbell, Josh Allen you know they were still in there making tackles making plays you know there were a couple of times that they were in Patrick Mahomes's face but Mahomes ended up getting the ball away because that's what Patrick Mahomes does the guy's basically a magician it's fucking shitty but this defensive line gets a C I think that there's room for improvement and I think that they'll get better and I hope that this whole defense as a whole gets better because if they continue to play like this then what the hell we're living in an alternate universe where the Jaguar offense is carrying the Jaguar defense now as a whole for this defense we're going to be giving them a C minus on the day I don't think they did great and I would say more than not that they did horrible, way more so than they did great. So I'm going to be giving this defense a C- minus for the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And finally, it's your favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week, Jaguars Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week. The offensive one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So let's start off with the defensive MVP, and I don't even know who to give it to. I'm probably just going to give it to Jalen Ramsey because Jalen, you know, he shut Tyreek down for the most part, did his job, did what he needed to do, and, you know, not not a lot of question marks. So I'm going to be giving it to Jalen Ramsey on the defensive side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, it's a battle between Gardner Minshew and DJ Chark, and that is not a battle in which I thought would be battling for the first offensive player of the week. 
But I love Gardner Minshew a lot, so I'm going to be giving it to him just to say that he has that award. So congratulations, Gardner Minshew. Congratulations, Jalen Ramsey. You guys kicked things off with an award of Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week from Treep Talks. Congratulations. And that was the Jaguars versus Chiefs recap, players of the week, and position grades. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just Trey Facts. And you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.